first plants that came out down here and started to feed things like ma mammoths and all the other things that came in with them. And in this area, and this was the floodplain of um, the Thames, there would have been wonderful um, uh, ice wedge polygons like these. And round the edge of those there was a nitrate and there was the water and very, very quickly, the biodiversity. I hate the, the, that word at all. It's actually natural history if you think about it. Where is the most biodiverse bit of London? Kew Gardens. And it costs 13 and a half um, a million every year to keep the ruddy plants warm. <laughs> it's the natural stuff we want, it's the natural history. And have you just heard they're thinking of closing down um, that amazing place? Because it costs you 34 quid to get you, your um, spouse and, and one kid there. And it's not very interesting for kids sitting in at that. So they are, and I had a bit in the um, uh, the paper up there say, for God don't, God's sake, don't do it. And why don't we get all the supermarkets to actually put money into it? Because that is their main resource. I mean, this is ordinary natural history. It's no, no, um, you know, uh, uh, thing that we have to do. So, right. right. Now, at this point, even though there were no trees at all, the big animals were coming in and leaving their remains all over the place. And of course, those bones are full of phosphate. And isn't phosphate important? And the one, uh, the one real problem the world's got is where the, is the phosphate they going to come from in the future? Because we can't actually recycle it. And many of the major dep uh, dep deposits and, um, you know, are dwindling very, very rapidly. Now we can recycle, but do we have to use lots and lots of uh, fossil fuel to do that recycling? Well, Mother Day, Nature does it pretty well. But here we know that the giant elk roamed and was eaten. And, they, and this poor animal had a real problem because all of a sudden trees started growing. It was warm enough. And slowly but surely, we go 7,000 years ago, the whole of the uh, British Isles were covered with ancient forest. I'd have loved to have seen it, but how could you live there? And the poor old giant elk couldn't, because it got its horns stuck in to the things. And it wa was one of the first animals to become extinct because of man. Man was there, and women too. They like eating. And, um, you know... The, this went to the wall of extinction and slowly but surely we saw the biodiversity going down the tube. But round those wonderful ice wedge polygons, um, forest came in very, very rapidly and it was extremely ra rapidly. And um, there is the first forest and very, very soon mixed deciduous forests. And how could you actually make a living in the British Isles? There were just two tiny little areas in northwest Scotland where there were no trees at all. But the rest of it, you couldn't walk, you couldn't see the wood for the trees, and how did you farm? Hooray! And so one comes, I couldn't find an ancient uh, Britain, uh, but a pal pal of mine, and this is in the, one of the tiny bits of the... Um, old growth forest still hanging on. In fact, I'm afraid it's been chopped down quite recently. So something pretty drastic had to happen. And I now take you to the Lake District. That wonderful landscape that we all say is natural. It's not natural at all. It's man-made, it's people-made and people-managed. And we go, wow, that's what natural Britain was like. And here the uh, Neolithic farmers who were bringing their cattle in there um, found um, a wonderful um, uh, greenstone which they could shape and polish and turn into axes. 
And this is one of the axes, and tens of thousands were actually uh, made in the Lake District um, and exported all over the north of Europe. And the farmers had come, and it is the farmers who have given us those wonderful uh, tourist um, things and uh, landscapes. And do remember that um, the, uh, the, the uh, Lake District is now being encroached on by big um, wind turbines. And they're starting, they've now got the go-ahead from this government, which is there, to actually put them within the bounds of um, the, the National Park. So, hooray to the um, thing. And so, once you've got axes which could chop things down, then uh, slash and burn. And the whole of Britain went into a cycle after cycle of slash and burn. And every time it was slashed and burnt, then of course they lost some of the nutrient which had been put by uh, the organic litter from the, the trees. 2,000 years ago, and my, my house up in the northeast is partly built from the um, uh, Roman wall. And do remember Hadrian um, was a bit of a stickler when he built that. But recently in London, they have found the remains of the Roman baths in which um, Hadrian banned mixed um, bathing because all the naughty things they got on to up to. Now when they found this thing, they should have re-erected it, but no, no, they built a, um, a multi-story car park on it. So where are all the orgies? Because uh, orgies again, where they used to do. And back 2,000 years ago, the Romans were actually uh, making extremely good red wine in Scotland, just round the corner from where I live. Uh, stretch your head, head. The temperature must have been much, much higher at that point. So if Al Gore started his um, hockey stick there, it would have gone down the way. But he started at, at the end of the, um, uh, the Little Ice Age, because he went up. So we're being bamboozled, I think. And then we come to um, the uh, medieval times. And in medieval times, for a long period, the temperature was three degrees centigrade were um, higher than it is now. And they were making uh, very, very good wine. They were growing fantastic vineyards up into um, County, County Durham. So, you know, again, it's where you want to stick, start your hockey stick and you can make it up and go, up and down, and there you are. So there it is, historical in evidence, uh, the last 1,000 years. The Vikings colonised Greenland. Wow, because the edges had melted and you could see some green, so they went up there and they farmed for a long time. And then I'm afraid the little ice age came along and they all died. They couldn't get back to Viking land to take their moo cows and their sheep and things basically with them. And then we come, the uh, uh, River Thames froze every, uh, every year um, for a long period of time. And again, that's where we are. And you can see Al Gore's hockey stick is going down. And it's been going down pretty rapidly for the last eight years years or 10 years. So what are we talking about? And of course the last um, ice fairs on the River Thames um, happened at that time and during the last age people were dying in their thousands of um, ague and of course that's malaria. And we are being told that all oh, you wait, global warming is going to raise the temperature, we'll all die of uh, malaria. Well, we died of malaria in right the way up into to, um, uh, Russia. It's an endemic thing. It is natural cycles going round and round. Right, I was a young Don at Durham University and I got a 